up you guys welcome back to another one if you're new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we're in the brand new 2023 nissan maxima courtesy of younger nissan in frederick maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so today we are in this one because believe it or not nissan has announced this will be the final year for the nissan maxima which is kind of sad because it's been around since 1980 so it is older than me so that is kind of sad to see a nameplate like that go away not to say though that it won't come back and maybe kind of an electrified form of some sort but for now this will be the last year for the maxima it's a good looking sedan so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always always let's start with pricing and so there will be three different trim levels for the 2023 maxima first one being the sv starting at thirty-eight thousand one hundred forty dollars which is a modest 700 dollars increase from the 2022 model year and i say modest because most manufacturers right now are a thousand or more above the previous year model just because of inflation and all that fun stuff sr trim which is the one we have today starting at forty three thousand three hundred dollars and lastly the platinum starting at forty four thousand two hundred fifty dollars but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the maxima is going to be the same powering the beast is a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 putting out 300 horsepower at 6400 rpm 261 pound feet of torque coming in at 4400 rpm power is going to be sent to the front wheels through a cvt with paddle shifters which you guys know we will of course be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 5.7 seconds top speed if you're interested 133 miles per hour with mpg numbers coming in at 20 in the city 30 on the highway taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the maxima wanted to mention to you guys the drive mode there is one of them obviously the maxima defaults to a normal mode but there is a sport driving mode button located just behind the circular dial so having said that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test and let's see how quickly the paddle shifters are going to react for us here and let's see how quickly we can get our new maxima here up to speed let me go ahead and hit that sport button so we are ready to go and so by the way full manual shift mode you can do that for this thing all you need to do is slide the shifter all the way to the back and to the left it's going to display what simulated gear you are in up on the digital portion of the gauges because it is a cvt after all so in three two one yo baby yeah that feels good man all right, so you got a little bit of slowness with the paddle shifters to be expected because it is a CVT. It's not a dual clutch, which would give you a quick reacting paddle shifter. But having said that, this thing is plenty quick. So a little bit of slipping at the beginning because 300 horsepower being sent to the front wheels after all. But not a whole lot of torque steer whatsoever, but there was a little bit of slipping. It is slippery out today. You guys could probably see from the GoPro here, the roads are a bit wet. It did rain earlier today. So... There is a little bit of slipping, but having said that, that's because there's a lot of power being set to the front wheels. If there wasn't wet roads today, that probably would have been an insane acceleration. I still felt, felt it as well in the pit of my stomach with that acceleration. So Maxima, plenty quick, not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.1 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 is your stopping distance goes, comes in at 113 feet let me tell you about that number you guys that is sport sedan good anything in the one teens is brilliant typically in sedans you find 120s and suvs you find 130s and big trucks you find 140s one teens though that is sport sedan good i love that number for the maxima as far as braking feel goes it's plenty fine definitely not a soft braking feel it leans towards the firmer side of things and again the number itself it speaks for itself so that is a brilliant number for the braking but anyways then touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars but did want to mention though if you go with the sr trim that we have today that is going to add several different suspension components as well including a sport tune suspension what is a sport tune suspension that is going to be retuned damper stiffer springs and a larger front stabilizer bar as well so overall as far as ride quality goes honestly 
to my surprise, it hasn't been all that bad in my short little test drive here, at least in Frederick. So usually with sport tuned suspensions, uh, without an adaptive damping suspension, you are gonna feel a bit more of the road. But having said that, like I said, there are some punishing roads here at Frederick. And so far my short little test drive, it honestly hasn't been that bad. So no issues with the ride quality there. As far as steering feel goes, I wouldn't have minded if they firmed it up a little bit. I'm still in the sport driving mode. I would have loved to have seen a heavier steering feel in that sport driving mode that uh, it's still kind of on the looser side of things. Now it's not super loosey goosey or anything like that, like a Hyundai Sonata, but it's certainly not an Acura Integra either. The Acura Integra steering feel is quite brilliant. So like I said, wouldn't have minded seeing a little heavier of a steering feel. Nissan, if you're watching this, planning on bringing back the Maxima name, there's one little uh, constructive criticism for you there. As far as cabin noise goes, I'm going 30 miles per hour right now. Now there isn't a whole lot of uh there's no wind noise whatsoever there's a heck of a lot of road noise either so i have no issues whatsoever when it comes to cabin noise it kind of rides like a luxury car on the inside here touching on visibility it's not bad i can see perfectly fine out the back nissan hasn't necessarily been known for visibility with their nissan 370z and vehicles like that but honestly with the maxima it's not bad at all so no issues in rear visibility rain sensing windshield wipers are also going to come on the platinum trim level adding to forward visibility because what that is is essentially going to turn on the windshield wipers whenever the maxima detects any kind of mist or rainfall so that's going to assist with forward visibility there as well but that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review you guys let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 nissan maxima all right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2023 Nissan Maxima finished in super black, in case you were curious of that exact exterior color name that we had on this one here today. As always, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. The VIN number starts with the number one, indicating that the Maxima here is built and assembled in the US. So let's go ahead and start up front. Chrome V-Motion front grille is going to come standard on the SV and the platinum trim levels. However, if you were to go with that SR that we have today, that is switched up to a gloss black V-Motion front grille, as you guys clearly tell. But the one minor change for the 2023 Maxima is going to be the emblem. So the Nissan logo, I should say it, both in the front and the back are slightly switched up to the modern look. So didn't want to mention that as well, but to the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights do come standard. Automatic feature coming with them, of course, meaning when it starts to get dark in the night, the headlights will turn on automatically for you there. Also though, automatic high beams coming standard on the Maxima. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams. And when that vehicle is gone, it's going to automatically then bounce it back up to high beam so nice little convenience feature there and of course you guys could probably see below those headlights we do have led fog lights which actually come standard on every single trim level across the board so that is a big win as well for the maxima but very aggressive very stealth like looking front end on our sr trim that we have with us here today but anyways that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one all right so now since we are around to the side of the maxima chrome belt line molding actually comes standard on every single trim level across the board even our sr that we have with us here today of course towards the back you got that floating roof line separating the roof from the rest of the body power adjustable gloss black side mirrors do come standard on all trim levels so they're going to be gloss black even if you go with the sv or platinum wanted to emphasize that heated side mirrors also coming standard with led integrated turn signals as well and if you were to go with the sr or platinum trims you're going to get that reverse tilt down feature when you put this thing in reverse so that is pretty cool too but anyways then take a look down at the wheel setup 18 inch machine finished alloys for the sv 19 inch gloss black aluminum alloys for the sr that's what you guys are looking at of course and 19 inch machine finished aluminum alloys for the platinum trim level but that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so but now since we are around to the back of this one, all the way to the top, you got that gloss black antenna. Just below that, you got a rear spoiler for the SR trim level only with an integrated uh, brake light into it too. That's pretty cool. You do have the trim level badging found back there. You can see the SR on the uh, passenger side taillight just above it there. LED taillights though coming standard. They look absolutely amazing back here. I love that look, but let me get down to the bottom here because we actually have an option here we have the optional rear diffuser so you guys can see that finished in chrome it goes for 370 dollars if you were interested i think it looks dang good back there so well done i like that rear diffuser but anyways to the sides dual exhaust outlets with quad tips in our case finished in black so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All 
Okay, so now since we are around to the back of the Maxima, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there's a few different ways to go ahead and do it. There is a button on the key fob, there's a button by the driver's side left knee, and there is a rubberized button, of course, on the trunk itself as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.3 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lighting found in that cargo area, of course. There's a couple grocery bag hooks. They were pretty large grocery bag hooks, so I did like that. And if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire located there as well, as opposed to the fix the flat. So I like that as well. But then make your way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 34.2 inches for reference. I'm mean, even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the back there. Rear ventilation does come standard. Just below that, you're going to find a USB-A and USB-C charging port. So I like that as well. Rear center armrest with cup holders, but there's also a slot where you can actually put your cell phone back there as well. So that's pretty cool. And then if you were to go with the platinum trim level for the rear passengers, at least you will get heated rear seats back there too. So that's pretty cool. But then making our way up to the front seats, eight-way power driver's seat with power lumbar coming standard, four-way power adjustable power passenger seat also standard the sr trim that we have today is going to add to that thigh support as well as memory settings for up to two different drivers found in the driver's side door there heated front seats are going to come standard leather seating is going to come standard but if you were to go with the platinum you're going to get diamond quilted inserts in that leather seating then if you were to go with the sr that we have you're going to get diamond quilted alcantara inserts so it's like a suede finish so Overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it's okay. To make it perfect Nissan, what I would personally do is get rid of the uh, horizontal seam going through the middle because it creates an awkward pressure point and make everything vertical seams like uh, luxury brands do like Acura and Lexus, just uh, name a couple there. So vertical seams are where it's at for the ultimate seat comfort. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is power adjustable for the platinum trim level only. Leather wrapped for all trim levels. It does come with a flat bottom, I love that. And Alcantara, in inserts to match the seating if you were to go with that SR trim level. So that's pretty cool. Heated steering wheel is then going to come with the SR and the Platinum. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. All of your buttons are located on one side of the key. Got your Nissan logo at the top, of course, lock, unlock, button to pop the rear trunk. But the circular button just underneath of that Nissan logo, that's going to be a remote start, which actually does come standard on every single trim level across the board. So that's going to help warm up the Maxima on colder days in West Maryland so I like that but ultimately this is all keyless entry with a push button start so all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the uh, aluminum brake pedal here which is pretty cool and press that engine start button located just in front of the shifter and so once started up tachometer is all the way to your left speedometer is on your right there is a seven inch digital cluster found in the middle of it all to control what is on those digital portion of the gauges there are steering wheel mounted controls found on the left side of the steering wheel of course but giving you things like a compass a digital speedometer outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty tire pressure the list goes on so pretty much everything you possibly want on the digital portion of the gauges there then touching on overall interior quality a dual panel panoramic moonroof is going to come on the sr and platinum trim level so that is what you guys are looking at right now of course auto dimming rear view mirror is going to come standard but you also get home link controls so up to three different garage doors on the bottom portion of that if you were to go with the sr or platinum trim levels also ambient led lighting coming with the sr or platinum trim levels as well dual zoom climb control though that comes standard you're going to get wood trim accents for the platinum you're going to get some satin dark chrome trim for the sr aluminum foot pedals again for the sr trim level as well so overall as far as interior quality goes it's not that bad actually so i like the silver finish located just around the shifter a lot of manufacturers will leave that a gray matte plastic or whatever so i like the silver finish also like the gloss black finishes around the cup holders i like the little trim accenting like i was just mentioning going through the doors just above the passenger side glove box all of the orange contrast stitching definitely works well for our sr trim level as well here you got an overhead sunglass holder i almost forgot to mention that just in front of the uh just to the right of the shifter you have a decent amount of storage as well as a bunch of charging ports there dual cup holders of course and within the center armrest decent amount of storage you have to have some coin storage in there and a 12 volt power outlet so interior quality is perfectly fine for me it's kind of luxury-esque so i'm a big fan of that but now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen and specifically let me start with what is just above that infotainment screen because I, you never see that these days but you got a cd player 
That's right, if you use CD still, you got it here in the Maxima. So probably the only car where that is still available. But anyways, eight inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming does come standard. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system also coming standard on every single trim level across the board. So gotta love that. Of course, you can check out your radio information up there. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there's a couple of them. Eight speakers is going to come in the SV. However, if you were to go with that SR or Platinum, you're going to get an 11 speaker Bose sound system. So that is the one we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. Bass is where it's at with Nissan and Infiniti. I've said that a thousand times. Bass was plenty good in the Maxima without a doubt. For 11 speakers, I was expecting a bit more clarity, but maybe it's because I'm coming off the Integra with 17 speakers. But honestly, clarity was okay. Bass was great in the Maxima. I will say that. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put the Maxima in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board, but also a 360 degree monitor there to the right coming standard for the SR and platinum trim levels only, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start by saying IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest rating given by IIHS. So that pretty much says it all right there. But front side side current airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Forward collision warning system, autonomous emergency brake with pedestrian detection, lane departure warning, a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert, rear parking sensors, and traffic sign recognition then as well. And then if you were to go with the SR Platinum, that's going to add to that front and rear parking sensors and intelligent lane intervention then as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, this is the final year of the Maxima. So if you want one, if you want a CD player in your car, now is your last chance because this is the final chance you have to buy the Maxima, but incredible safety on this thing. It doesn't get better than an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. Excellent braking as well. Good interior quality on this thing. As far as room for improvement goes, the CVT always is a bit emotionless, so you got that. And I think full digital gauge cluster would look pretty darn good in the Maxima as well. I know Nissan can do it. They have done it on plenty of their other vehicles already. But let me know what you guys think of the Maxima in the comments section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in your new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.